The FBI arrested two Chinese nationals in New York last month, accusing them of running a secret police station to watch and intimidate Chinese dissidents living overseas. There are more than 100 of these stations around the world that researchers say Beijing uses to silence its critics. Nick Schifrin and producer Teresa Sebrian Randa report. Nearly 6,000 miles from Beijing, on a quiet street in Madrid, a nondescript office claims to offer assistance for Chinese citizens. But the reality is more shadowy. A Chinese dissident leads us to what he calls the source of Chinese repression. It begins with an invitation. Here, it says we should be careful with telecommunications from, that if we receive a suspicious message, we should get in touch with the Chinese embassy. But Yuan Li says the only suspicious messages that he received came from Chinese authorities and were sent in order to silence. I am sure they did a systemic campaign against me, led by these Chinese associations. And now we know there are secret police stations hidden inside Chinese associations. When the pandemic began, he created a YouTube channel to expose what he calls the truth about the Chinese Communist Party. And he appears on far-right Spanish TV, what some call Spanish Fox News. I had a rebel opinion, because I think everyone is a victim of Chinese Communism. We have to hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable. It withheld information by censoring doctors who blew the whistle on COVID and threw journalists in jail. In response to that criticism, he says these posters circulated on Chinese social media calling for him to, quote, drink tea, that is, submit to interrogation by Chinese officials. He says he received death threats and his family back in China was intimidated. My sister called and asked, brother, what did you do? Because the police came to our house with many police vans. They came in and asked, where is Wan Li? When is he coming back? My mom was also arrested. She spent three days in jail. This association is in a residential neighborhood near Madrid's Chinatown. It was closed when we filmed, but inside, a photo of the Chinese county Qingtian, which is in the office's name, the General Qingtianese Association in Spain. International researchers say in 2021, the association worked with Chinese mainland police to question a Chinese entrepreneur, as seen in this video posted by Chinese officials. Beijing says he was, quote, persuaded to return to China to face charges. There are many dissidents in Madrid, and many of them ask me, what can we do to protect ourselves, for instance, in the case of an extradition? Because this could happen to any of us. The Chinese Communist Party controls all Chinese associations. The association website says its police stations, quote, protect the rights and interests of overseas Chinese. And Chinese state media says Qing Tian launched police stations in 11 countries, including Spain. Beijing is quite explicit in what its um, attempts are when it conducts this transnational policing or transnational repression activities. It wants to control the overseas communities, but to a larger extent also it wants to control the narrative worldwide about the Chinese Communist Party, about the People's Republic of China. Laura Harth is the campaign director with Safeguard Defenders, the human rights group that first revealed Beijing's covert police stations using open source Chinese documents. They found more than 100 Chinese police outposts in 53 countries set up by authorities from four Chinese regions. These are stations, centers that have not been declared to the host governments where these are operating. And as far as you can tell, how extensive, how expansive is this effort across the globe? Really, these stations are, are the tip of the iceberg of what is a massive, massive campaign to really um, crack down on dissent around the world. Xi Jinping has targeted critics both inside China and overseas. He's portrayed his efforts as a way to fight crime and corruption. The so-called human rights organization, Safeguard Defenders. Beijing's advocates argue they have every right to target Chinese overseas. Hu Shijin is the former editor-in-chief of the Communist Party-aligned tabloid Global Times. Most countries have supported and cooperated with China's pursuit of fugitives. 
The accusation made by safeguard defenders is an old-fashioned way by demonizing China by calling criminals fleeing overseas as political dissidents. We cannot and will not tolerate the Chinese government's persecution. But now countries are exposing Chinese tactics. Last month, the United States attorney for New York's Eastern District revealed federal charges that accused Lu Jianwang and Chen Jinping of running a police station in New York's Chinatown on behalf of China's Ministry of Public Security, or MPS. The MPS officers who have been charged today are not focused on preventing crime. Rather, the complaints charge these MPS officers with engaging in transnational repression schemes. When I arrived in the United States, I thought that there would be fewer threats. But it feels like the Chinese Communist Party is everywhere in this country, and the threats are very severe. Jie Lijian is a prominent Chinese pro-democracy activist living in Los Angeles, where Safeguard Defenders found another police station. He criticizes Chinese human rights abuses and the silencing of Chinese doctors who blew the whistle on COVID. He fled China in 2018 after being arrested and he says tortured in a psychiatric hospital for advocating for better labor rights. He says in California, Chinese agents record his protests and worse. He says he's been attacked five times and was once stabbed. In my home, my windows have been destroyed. These threats and harassment have brought me to a dark place. As victims, we experience tremendous psychological pressure and a deep sense of oppression that is difficult to express. They work very efficiently. For example, if we hold protests, even before they end, Chinese agents will have visited some of their homes and threatened and intimidated their families. Senior FBI officials believe the same actors who physically intimidate also intimidate online. On Twitter, Jie received death threats. This message says, I will shoot and kill Jie Lijian. Social media researchers say Beijing uses bots to target Chinese critics with thousands of messages. Last year, Google removed more than 50,000 accounts made by a Chinese influence operation. Researchers believe the same operation imitated safeguard defenders to try and conceal their reports. The Chinese authorities are not completely stupid. They will prefer to do as much of this as possible through online means because that does kind of insulate those Chinese actors, agents, if you will, from, from accountability. But activists, including Yuan Li, say their messages won't be obscured. He says he hopes to build his own association that protects, not targets, dissidents. I can no longer take a step back. This is my face, and I hope this personal sacrifice that I made will be worth it. But even as countries crack down, activists know that Beijing is still watching. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.